Hi there, the device on which you're watching this video to the air which is surrounding it and your own body. What do you think is common between them? Well, all three of them have certain mass and they occupy space. So we can say that they are all matter. And hey, from our earlier classes, we are already aware of what is matter and how do we classify matter. And we also know that different states of matter are interconvertible. But before we dive into the mole concept chapter, let's quickly refresh these basics to ensure we are all set to master it. Now, if we look at the state of matter here, the device is solid, the air which is surrounding it is gas. And if we look at our own body, it is composed of solids, liquids, as well as gases, right? So essentially, there are three states of matter. Solid, for example, a cube of ice. Liquid, for example, a glass of water. And gas, for example, the steam coming out from this hot cup of tea. Now, if we look at the solids, yes, they have fixed volume and they will always have a fixed shape as well. If we talk about liquids, they do have fixed volume, but the shape is not going to be fixed. For example, if I pour this glass of water in a bottle, the shape of the water will become that of that of the water bottle, right? And if we talk about the steam out here, clearly there is no fixed shape and there is no fixed volume. Now, interestingly, most of the solids can be converted to liquids on heating. So, if we take this cube of ice, increase the temperature, we will get liquid water and this process is called melting. Now, if we take liquid water and increase the temperature further, it will be converted to steam. And this process is called vaporization. Now, we can cool down a particular gas for example, if we cool down the steam, it converts into water. So yes, gas can be cooled down to liquid and this process is called condensation. And if we further lower the temperature of liquids, they can be solidified. For example, if we lower down the temperature of liquid water, it will convert to ice. This process is called freezing. In fact, we can just bypass liquid and go directly from solid to gas. Check this out. This is a video shot by my own phone and you can clearly see the solid here is getting converted to gas. And this direct conversion of solid to gas can be called sublimation. And the opposite of gas going to solid can be called desublimation. Now this out here is dry ice. Dry ice is nothing but solid carbon dioxide which is directly going to the gaseous carbon dioxide. So this is the sublimation of dry ice. Now, if we consider this dry ice, I have a very interesting question. Do you think it is pure? huh? Or let's rather consider your room. Well, your room is filled with matter. There is this bag here. There are these headphones here. There are all these quotations, chair, laptop, some of the pictures. There is this clock. There is this water bottle. There is this cup of tea, let's say, all of these are the matter that you are surrounded with. But is it pure or is it a mixture? Hmm? Well, let's consider two examples present in the room. Let's consider this, the bottle which is having water here. And let's consider this cup of tea out here and understand what is pure substance or a mixture. So if we consider this water bottle, let's just say that it is composed of only water that is only H2O molecules are present here. When all constituent particles of the substance are same in chemical nature, it is said to be pure substance. So you would have to exclude that there are no minerals here, there are no other solids here. So the constituent particles of pure substance have fixed composition. It just has water, H2O, where the hydrogens, two of them are combining with one oxygen, right? Two is to one. Here is something interesting. When we talk about the drinking water, well, drinking water usually has minerals, okay? 
So drinking water will not be called as a pure substance. Here we are considering, we are assuming it to be distilled water, completely distilled water. That means it is composed of only water molecules. Only then can we call it a pure substance. Coming back to the example of the dry ice. If you see dry ice out here, if it is composed of just carbon dioxide molecules, nothing else, no other impurities, just carbon dioxide molecules, then we can certainly call it a pure substance. Now, if we look at this gold brick out here, this is having, let's say, just the particles of gold. AU element is present. That's it. Nothing else. No other impurity. Let's say it's 24 karat. Then this can also be called pure substance. But if we consider the tea in the room, it is composed of maybe the tea leaves, sugar, milk, some other additives like ginger or cinnamon, we can say. The tea out here is an example of mixture. So mixture contains particles of two or more pure substances which may be present in any ratio. Hence their composition is variable. Now we can add the components in any amounts that we want. There is no such fixed ratio. So even if I want to taste you know the tea from somewhere out here or if I taste the tea from somewhere at the bottom from here maybe the taste will be same, the sweetness level will be same, right? So I can say the particles are uniformly distributed. Also, we can say that the composition, because the taste is same, the sweetness level is same, we can say the composition is uniform throughout. Such a mixture can be called as a homogeneous mixture. Now, another example of this homogeneous mixture can be, let's go back to your room and open the window. Let the air come in. So this air that we are talking about, well, it has various gases, maybe nitrogen, oxygen, there is also hydrogen, helium, water vapors, etc. So for air, we can say that the particles are uniformly distributed and the composition is uniform throughout. But what if the particles are not uniformly distributed and the composition is not uniform throughout? For example, what if we take this mixture? What do we have here? We have sulfur and iron powder. So we can clearly see if this portion I pick up, I will see more of the sulfur particles being present. So sulfur is yellow in color. And if you see this black particles out here, these are for iron powder, okay? So this is the iron powder that we have. Now composition is random. So I can say composition is not uniform throughout. And also we can clearly see, like for example, in this place we have more of the sulfur and out here, if we just look, there are more of iron powder. So we can tell the different components here right the two components are clearly visible in this case so we can say that the different components are visible now if we actually bring a magnet closer to this mixture what can be observed all the iron will go running towards the magnet that means we can separate iron from sulfur using magnetic separation so in general, if you're talking about a heterogeneous mixture, the components of a mixture can be separated by using physical methods. Like depending on what kind of a mixture we have, we can use a simple physical method like filtration. Now in filtration, if we simply have muddy water, we can separate mud from water using the process of filtration. Now let's do something interesting. Let's take iron and sulfur in a particular ratio such that on heating what we get is iron sulfide. Iron here is in plus 2 oxidation state and sulfur in minus 2 oxidation state. So if you look at iron sulfide out here, it looks very different from its components, isn't it? Well, what has been formed is a new compound actually. So what is a compound? A compound is nothing but when two or more atoms of different elements combine together in a definite ratio. So here iron and sulfur are combining in one is to one ratio, right? To form this compound, which is iron sulfide. The constituents of a compound cannot be separated into simpler substances by physical methods. Now, if we bring back our magnet and try to attract the iron, well, iron no more will be attracted, right? So we can say the constituents of a compound cannot be separated into simpler substances by physical methods like magnetic separation in this case. 
it's worthwhile to note that if it just has iron sulfide no other impurities only fes 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 what we have is a pure substance so yes compounds can be pure substances now if you remember another example of pure substance that we did was water now water has h2o can that be called as a compound well the answer lies in the properties of water which is of course different from those of its constituent elements for example water is made up of the elements hydrogen and oxygen which combines in a fixed ratio of 2 is to 1 right if we look at the properties of hydrogen it burns with a pop sound and if we talk about oxygen it supports fire but water on the other hand extinguishes fire so there you go water is of course a compound it is time to summarize whatever we have done. So matter can be divided into mixture or pure substances. Mixtures can further be divided into homogeneous or heterogeneous mixture. The example of homogeneous mixture that we talked about was air, tea or we can simply take sugar solution. The example of heterogeneous mixture that we talked about was iron and sulfur when they were mixed in a random ratio. Next was the pure substances which can be simply elements or compounds. The examples that we talked about were hydrogen, oxygen or simply gold. And the example of compound that we talked about is iron sulfide, the compound that was formed or water. And these all have immense importance in chemistry.